Greetings all and welcome to part 14 of the Elliott Wave 101 course. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel then please do so and that way you don't miss any future updates as more material is published. If you found this video helpful then please give it a like and don't forget to check out the other course videos. In this video we're going to take a look at the personalities of each wave. So let's take a look at each wave and examine the sort of market conditions they might appear in and the market psychology what the market psychology might be when a particular wave forms. So naturally we'll start off with wave 1. So here from the Elliott Wave Principle first waves as a rough estimate about half of first waves are part of the basing process and thus tend to be heavily corrected by wave 2. In contrast to bear market rallies within the previous decline however this first wave rise is technically, technically more constructive often displaying a subtle increase in volume and breadth. I will point out here very quickly that most of this uh, literature is based around indexes, I would suggest, uh, Dow Jones, etc. Plenty of short selling is in evidence as the majority has finally become convinced that the overall trend is down. Investors have finally gotten one more rally to sell on and they take advantage of it. The other 50% of first waves rise from either large bases formed by the previous correction from downside failures or from extreme compression. From such beginnings, first waves are dynamic and only moderately retraced. So let's imagine a market where price is moving like this in a pretty clear downtrend. So when wave one begins um, and it starts as the basing process, the only evidence that we're at the end of the sell-off will be very subtle and won't really alert anyone to its uh, formation. So we would most likely get a move up like this. But at this point, it would be very fair and logical to view this as just another corrective bounce to go short on. So structured traders will simply look at, be looking at this top as a short term line in the sand where their stops might be set and attempt to short the market. So at this point there is no reason to think that the trend is finished and price should still keep moving down. Unless of course you're on the lookout for it. So here we have a different situation where wave 1 is moving away from the basing process. So it's easy to see, how, see here how the price action is beginning to compress and show signs that it may not want to go down any further. So at this point stops will be tightened up and the market is probably coming to a general consensus that the sell-off may be over. It's from these sort of situations that we may expect to find a steeper and faster wave 1 as every, everybody's attempts to get on the market's turning point. Now an earlier Titian may have seen this with an ending diagonal at the very end of wave 5 to signal a market that is running out of gas. Now it's probably likely that a lot of other indicators and techniques are also pointing to signs of a bottom and that's what makes wave 1, the wave 1 move so swift as everybody is jumping on the trade. So now let's think about wave 2's or second waves. Second waves often retrace so much of wave 1 that most of the profits gained up to that time are eroded away by the time it ends. At this point, investors are thoroughly convinced that the bear market is back to stay. Second waves often end on very low volume and volatility, indicating a drying up of selling pressure. So here we have the first example where the market psychology will st still be to sell rallies, and it's likely the majority will. So the first move down we'll have the shorts believing they're on the right side of the trade and we'll be looking for price to break the structural low. The ensuing small counter rally may then convince them to place a protective stop above the latest peak which would be a sensible thing to do. So the ensuing counter rally will not threaten these tops and not alert the shorts that they may be on the wrong side of the trade. The final downturn may be the first time the shorts become alerted that the short may be running out of steam. The movement is likely to be less steep and have less volume than the first down move. Short term indicators may also be warning that price is struggling to go lower and may not be able to break the bottom. So observant shorts might tighten their stops even further, which sets, up the, which sets the market up for a rally as many layers of stops begin to congregate at the technical peaks. Now on the flip side of this, the longs may be fretting that the bottom will indeed be broken as they have seen a vast majority of their profits disappear and may even be negative on the trade. However, 
if they're patient and disciplined, there's no reason to move the stop below the low unless they succumb to fear and doubt. Here we have the second example with a kickoff wave. Now wave twos in this situation are more likely to be flatter and shallower than when wave one is basing. Although it's more likely to see a zigzag in wave two, this is the type of situation where we might expect to find a flat correction. So it's easy to imagine that traders who have missed uh, missed the rally are, are, are waiting, laying in wait for the pullback, um, and, and probably at any old structural point with buy orders as they resist the urge to chase the market. So this keeps price supported and resists the attempted correction. So once again, at the end of the correction, indicators may be showing a lack of selling pressure as the volume dries up. So now let's look at wave three. So third waves, third waves are wonders to behold. They are strong and broad and the trend at this point is unmistakable. Increasingly favorable fundamentals enter the picture as confidence returns. Third waves usually generate the greatest volume and price movement and are most often the extended wave in a series. It follows, of course, that the third wave of the third wave and so on will be the most volatile point of strength in any wave sequence. Such points invariably produce breakouts, continuation gaps, volume expansions, exceptional breadth, major Dow theory trend confirmations and runaway price movement creating large hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly gains in the market, depending on the degree of the wave. Virtually all stocks participate in third waves. Besides the personality of B waves, that of third waves produce the most valuable clues to the wave count as it unfolds. So here we are back at the first base, basing wave example. So the first move in a wave three will probably turn the market from majority bearish to majority bullish, as all the stops and structural tops are taken out. So at this point, the bulls are likely to move stops higher, most likely to the bottom of, perhaps unbeknown to them, wave C. So whilst most in the market will be changing their bias from bearish to bullish, the early attrition, even though they may have already been long, cannot definitively say that we're in the third wave, and so may label the movement tentatively as one, two, but fully anticipating a three is in progress. So I like to consider this as penciling in the movement. So at some point in the development of the third wave, the Elliottician would be expecting another smaller correction to repeat the process just witnessed, but on a smaller scale. Now all eyes are on the high to see if it breaks to confirm the bullish structure now evident in the market. The Elliottician also has these peaks in their sights but we'll also be looking for the next movement to exceed 100% of the length of the first wave, as this would be the first qualifier that wave three was in fact in progress. They would also begin to label the subwave structure that made up wave three. Now the next move up would be the third of the third, which is the promised land of Elliott Wave County. It'd be strong and steep, blowing away not just 100% of the first wave one, but also 100% of the sub wave one. So at this point, the market is in little doubt about which way the wind is blowing as everybody scrambles to jump on the move at any cost. So at this point, the Elliottician would be confident in their count and would probably move from pencil to pen. They would also be performing extension projections to think about possible targets, points of confluence, and any areas where the market needs to be closely observed for any signs that the trend is tiring. Note that any Elliottician with an eye to detail, which is very important, will ensure that all the Wave 3 subdivide into valid impulses at smaller degrees. Furthermore, they will also have ensured that any potential motive wave in the impulse is also in five waves. Now let's move to Wave 4. Fourth waves are predictable in both depth and form because by alternation they should differ from previous second waves of the same degree. More often than not they trend sideways, building the base for the final fifth wave move. Lagging stops build their tops and begin declining during this wave, and since only the strength of a third wave was able to generate any motion in them in the first place, this initial deterioration in the market sets the stage for non-confirmations and subtle signs of weaknesses during the fifth wave. 
So in an Elliott sense, the movement of wave four is logical. So anyone who has enjoyed the ride from close to the bottom is probably now seeing a market that's running out of steam and deciding that now is the time to take profits. There will be, however, a cohort of participants who are very late to the party and are only opening long positions now. And this, is, this meeting of the buying and selling pressure is likely to make price go sideways or begin to track, contract into a triangle. So most market participants will simply see a sideways range and a range bound market that hasn't broken trend and can be expected to move higher. And thus are likely to have plans that involve buying the breakout. So the Elliott Elliottician is anticipating this sideways movement owing to the psychological state of the market and the alternation of wave two. They should now be preparing for the final movement of the sequence. Now let's look at wave five. Fifth waves in stocks are always less dynamic than third waves in terms of breadth. They usually display a slower maximum speed of price change as well, although if a fifth wave is an extension, speed of price change in the third of the fifth can exceed that of the third wave. Similarly, it is while it is common for volume to increase through successive impulse waves at cycle degree or larger, it usually happens in a fifth wave below primary degree only if the fifth wave extends. Otherwise, look for lesser volume as a rule in the fifth wave as opposed to the third. Market dabblers sometimes call for blow-offs at the end of long trends, but the stock market has no history of reaching maximum acceleration at a peak. Even if a fifth wave extends, the fifth of the fifth will lack the dynam dynamici dynamicism that preceded it. <laughs> Sorry about that. During advancing fifth waves, optimism runs extremely high despite a narrowing of breadth. Nevertheless, market action does improve relative to prior corrective wave rallies. So whilst wave three is often referred to as the institutional wave, wave five is often called the retail wave. So it's, this is the point of the cycle where the professionals begin to transfer their shares to the latecomers and those that are desperate to grab some of the wealth that has been on offer. The Elliottician sees the potential for a trade here, but the expectations are anchored about how much further the movement can go before its strength fades. Once the top of wave three is broken, the Elliottician might be looking for a one-to-one -one relationship with the length of wave one as the first reference point to pay attention for signs of weakness. Here it is advisable to keep a very close eye on volume and the oscillators that may be displaying signs of divergence. It's at these times that extreme greed and unanchored euphoria by overnight experts will come to the fore and expectations by the masses of never-ending rallies and free money will reach their peak. Needless to say, wave fives are the, are the times to be extremely careful. Now let's move on to the corrective waves. A waves. During the A wave of a bear market, the investment world is generally convinced that this reaction is just a pullback pursuant to the next leg of the advance. The public surges to the buy side despite the first really technically damaging cracks in individual stock patterns. The A wave sets up the tone for the B wave to follow. A five wave A, A indicates zigzag for wave B, while a three wave A indicates a flat or a triangle. So at this point, most of the market would see no reason to think that the trend has failed and that price won't keep rising, much the same as the conditions witnessed at the wave's end just, uh, just by being reversed. So a reverse psychology of what we saw here when wave one started. So this first movement down shouldn't really alarm anyone especially if it holds the structural bottoms made by wave four of both primary and one lesser degree. If the movement down does break that structure, then a good portion of the market will be alerted to the probability that the uptrend has failed. There'll still be a lot of participants, however, that simply viewed this movement as a pullback within the larger trend. And if wave four bottoms are not broken, then it's likely that there will be larger, a larger long position. An Elliottician would be watching here and planning to trade the B wave. So let's take a look at the B wave now. B waves are phonies. They are sucker plays, bull traps, speculators paradise, orgies for odd lot of mentality or expressions of dumb institutional complacency or both. They often involve a focus on a narrow list of stocks. <laughs> Maybe fang stocks. Are often unconfirmed by other averages, are rarely technically strong and are virtually always doomed to be complacent to complete retracement by wave C. The analyst can easily say to that himself or herself, there is something wrong with this market 
then chances are it's a B wave. X waves and D waves in expanding triangles, both of which are corrective wave advances, have the same characteristics. So it's easy to imagine that upon this movement, the longs are getting excited again and have no reason to believe that price won't continue on to break the high. So range and structure players might be seeing this as simply a retest of the old range, but probably won't be involved from the long side unless the top breaks. In an instance where the A wave didn't break structure, as shown here, then it's more likely many participants are waiting for price to move up again, but will have tighter stops at or just below the lows. The Elliottician is watching closely to start opening shorts or closing longs if they have held through the peak of wave 5. The correct identification of 5 waves up and the first corrective movement down should leave the analyst in little doubt about what is coming next. Now let's take a look at C waves. C waves. Declining C waves are usually devastating in their destruction. They are third waves and have most of the properties of third waves. It is during these declines there is virtually no place to hide except cash. The illusions held throughout waves A and B tend to evaporate and fear takes over. C waves are persistent and broad. Advancing C waves within upward corrections in larger bear markets are just as dynamic and can be mistaken for the start of a new upswing, especially since they unfold in five waves. So I think the slide says it all. Anyone who has left long for fast gains from the preceding five waves up will be ripped apart by wave C. So smarter players will have read the signs and are likely to have entered shorts on the break of the B wave low. Excuse me, the A wave low as the Elliottician playing cautiously would have done. A more aggressive trader might have been looking to sell the top of the B wave, but this carries more risk. So it's at this point that the market will lose its collective cool, but the calm-minded and rational analyst will see the opportunity to pick up a still valuable stock cheaply. The Elliottician will see that this is the third and final wave of the correction, and that the chance to buy at the start of a new upward cycle is close at hand. But a word of warning here, this is the dangerous point in account. Wave 3s and C waves have many of the same characteristics and are often mistaken for each other. So what appears to be a very reasonable ABC correction may unfold into a full motive wave that forces the electrician to backtrack and rework the preceding counts. So C waves are usually representative of a highly emotional state in the market as many longs have their profits wiped out and start to trade on tilt. So it is here that patience is required. Remember, the market is little more than the movement of money from the impatient to the patient. There are some characteristics of both D and E waves listed in the Elliott Wave Principle, but I'll leave you to read about them for yourself. So that also concludes the 101 course, which is all theory based. So please watch the conclusion video next to find out how you can aggregate all this information into one readily available source and some additional sources of information to help you continue on your Elliott journey. The next course will be based more on practical application of the wave principle, where we'll take a look at real life examples. So neat line drawings are nice to look at, but the market really gives us such clarity. But if an Elliottician adheres to the rules and guidelines as laid down by the Elliott wave principle, and as I have attempted to demonstrate in the 101 course, then they have the best possible chance of applying a correct count. Thanks for watching the 101 course, and don't forget to watch the conclusion video for more information.